Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Vlasich, Bosnia. But before that, this video is brought to you by Patrick Cornier and Schultz Modding. Thank you for being farm birds. So the Vlasich, Bosnia map you can be found at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to the Vlasleesh map. This map is based on a real place that lies in the plateau of the Vlasleesh mountain in the heart of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The terrain is quite hilly with beautiful landscapes which abounds in forests and mountain streams. The most represented branches of agriculture in these parts of the country are animal husbandry and forestry. Although fans of grass missions and forestry will enjoy the map, there will also be enough for those who like productions and arable farming. Almost all of the buildings on the map are custom made, which gives the map another touch of authenticity, but some are also added for better gameplay. On this map, you'll find the following. Five pre-placed farms. The main one that belongs to you at the start, and four including one located in a forest. The main farm will have starting vehicles and equipment, cow barn, and two fields. There are 63 farmlands available on the map, 44 fields from small to big, and many with grass missions. There are three forestry sites, a BGA that will not produce electricity, but will produce methane that you'll be able to collect and sell at the local gas station. There's traffic, pedestrians, Bosnian registration plates, and a custom crop counter. Productions on this map include a carpenter, sawmill, dairy, a local water mill that will take your corn as well as produce corn flour, rye to produce rye flour, and durum to produce durum flour. The bakery has three new products in rye bread, cornbread, sweet cornbread, pumpkin pie, and pasta. Placeable greenhouses include new fruits in plum, pear, apple, and pumpkin. There are also two added liquid trailers to transport methane, and you can find it in the miscellaneous category. There is a juice factory that will produce plum juice, pear juice, and apple juice. There are various selling stations scattered around the map, and there are two additional things. This map includes rye and durum wheat as added crops, change to the weather conditions so winters will be with lots of snow, snow road textures during snowfall, placeable fertilizer, liquid fertilizer, herbicide, and lime by points. And in the decoration section, you'll find several places of decorative objects as well as two decorative fences. There's a whole lot going on on this map, and I have to say, after all of these videos, I still don't know why I like certain maps, and I really like this one. This map does not have any required mods, but we are going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food or review, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find the main starting farm is completely void of buildings as well as machinery. In addition, you do not own any land in those alternate game modes. Also, if you happen to be loading the system up on a lower end system, you should find that performance is pretty good as far as staying away from the forestry areas. If you dive into the forestry areas though, you may see your frames drop down below 60 FPS. Now that was done on a TIS system, which has AMD integrated graphics. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. And at first look, there's not a whole lot going on. And that may be one of the reasons why I like this map. I don't really need a map that is chock full of stuff and loaded with things all over the place. But I tell you, when we're moving around this map, it just has that feel to it. And that's one of the reasons why I really like it. This map does have all the standard crops available to us in FS22. In addition, we have rye and durum wheat as added crops. And if you are playing with the premium expansion, we will have our red beets, carrots, and parsnips. Taking a look at our farmland screen, you'll see we start by owning farmland ID 49. That is the main starting farm that can be bought in any alternate game mode for a mere $33,153. We also own Farmland ID 59 and 43. Those are two starting farms. Now, the description said there were five farms on this map, and I had to do a little bit of looking, and I had to do a little bit of imagination to come up with the last one. But we have over Farmland ID 9, 
a chicken and sheep farm that can be bought for $96,476. We also have a cow and chicken farm at Farmland ID 16 that can be bought for $36,392. At Farmland ID 3, we have a farmhouse in the middle of a forest that can be bought for $48,903. And then lastly, we have a farmhouse and a sawmill up here at Farmland ID 40. That can be bought for $22,000. And that should be the five farms that are available on this map. In addition, we do have the biogas plant, which is located down here to the southwest, just beside Field 35. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any fields, what fields are included, then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? We can now compare that to our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And we're seeing fields arranged in size from one hectare up to 8.85. With respect to the crop counter, we do have a modified crop counter, as we can see here. Do note there is no growth schedule for cotton or sugarcane. If you do want to use cotton or sugarcane on this map, you will need to disable the crop counter in order to do so. We can see we have our crop calendar for Durham wheat and rye listed here. With respect to our prices screen, we do have the ability to sell most but not all of the crops available to us. Fat, cotton, and sugarcane are excluded as sell points. Now, one might say that's not that big of a deal, dude, because in the crop counter, you can't grow those. True, but players could turn the crop counter off. And by the fact that they are included in the map right here, then in theory, with the crop counter turned off, people could grow those. And therefore, I still like to see the ability to sell things even if they can't be grown in the crop counter, unless they've been completely stricken from the map, which they're not on this one. With respect to our animal outputs, eggs, wool, and milk, we do indeed have the ability to sell those. And we also have the ability to sell our silage, hay, straw, and grass. As we continue down through all of our base game production items, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items as well. We do not have the ability to buy bulk lime but we do have the ability of getting rid of our stones. So if we are playing with stones enabled, we will be able to take them to the restaurant, oddly enough. We have our Durham wheat, our rye. We also have Durham flour, rye flour, pasta, corn flour, apple pie, apple juice, pumpkin, pumpkin pie, apples, rye bread, corn bread, sweet corn bread, pear juice, pear, plum juice, plum, those are all new things that we can either grow or produce on this map. With respect to our washed root crops and the farm production pack, we do not have the ability to sell any of those. But what we do have the ability to do is we do have the ability to sell our premium expansion and our platinum expansion production items. Everything can be sold down at the restaurant. If we are playing with pumps and hoses, well, we can also take our separated manure over to the bale sell point. And those playing with straw harvest, we also have the ability to get rid of our hay and straw pellets down at the bale sell point as well. Taking a look at our vehicle overview, we own all of our starting machinery in new farmer mode. We do not have any animals at our main starting farm, but the cow and chicken farm and the chicken and sheep farm do have animals pre-placed on those. So if you do buy those, you will have sheep and cows already. This map does not have any contracts, I do believe, on this map. And we also do not own any production chains. Lastly, we didn't show it off, but this map also does not have any collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Kloss Arion 660 and the Fent Favorite 515 small tractors. We have the Massey Ferguson 3670 medium tractor and the New Holland CH7.70 harvester. For our harvester, we have the 28 foot grain header and we have the Nardi N6030 header trailer. The Kloss Karat 140 TD trailer, 
we have the Lemkin Samgard 9500K Cultivator and the HR4040 Power Harrow. That Power Harrow is often combined with the Venta 4030 Cedar for a dynamic duo combination. We have the Lemkin Azurit 9 and Solitar 23 Planter and Seed Hopper. Sorry, let's go back to that. That is not a seed hopper, that is a fertilizer hopper. We have the Mega 1200L Fertilizer and Liquid Herbicide Sprayer and a Mega 1200L Front Supply Tank. We have the Amazon TA, sorry, ZA TS3200 Fertilized Spreader. And then we wrap it up with a pair of 750 kilogram front weights. With respect to mods and DLCs, this map does have two custom liquid trailers and these have been modified to transport methane. And we're gonna be able to draw methane out of the BGA and then take it to our gas station in order to sell it. And we're gonna have that right there, methane sell point. And then again, as I mentioned earlier, the BGA is right there. So it's just a quick ride up the road, hang a right and then hang a left into the methane sell point. Now with respect to our starting farm, well, everything here at the starting farm can be sold. In fact, everything on all the farms can be sold, which is a really, really great thing to see. We have our sleep trigger here at the side of this building. We have a nice small three bay garage machine shed here. And then coming around the side, this is going to be our cow area. This is going to be our milk point. We have our food trough. We have our straw trigger inside. And then we have our cow delivery point. 150 cows in this building. And then I'm going to out on a limb and saying this is where our slurry is going to be. This is likely going to be the straw trigger. I didn't see that in my preview of the map. And we got a nice area here where we could put something else down to further expand our farmyard. We've got our farm silo, so we have our dump point and our fill pipe. And then we have our chicken coop. So 500 chickens in total here. We have our dump point for our food. And then we have our egg spawn point. And that, folks, that's it. That is our starting farm. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but you know what? It gets the job done. It doesn't really need to be all that fancy and complex, but man, I don't really know what it is. Maybe somebody can pinpoint it and give me a hint. Why do I like this map so much? I don't know. Let's jump back here because I do remember that we have Failed to show off the precision farming soil map. This map is making use of the generic soil map. So let's go ahead and see how it is being applied to these fields. As you can see, for the most part, all of these fields are gonna be some combination of soil types with the starting farm field here, 42, mostly loamy sand and a little bit of sandy loam. And then the other starting farm is gonna be mostly silty clay with a wee little bit of loam. Now let's get to the skies here. We'll just kind of take a look around. We've got a school below us here. We've got a sawmill way up on the hillside. We've got a road just kind of cutting through the hillside there. We've got a cow and chicken farm located right there. The other side of the tree line. Then as we continue to pan around further up on the hilltop, that's where our sheep and cow farm is going to be located. Is 
Take a look off to the south. And then we come around for basically what I'm going to call the town portion of the map. Where we have our fuel trigger and our methane buy point. We've got houses going up the hillside there. And pretty much that's it. All right, there's not a whole lot going on. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. If we make our way down the hill here, got this little monument, little memorial area. And we have our sawmill. So we have our interactive icon. We have our dump point, we have our wood cell point, and we have our pallet spawn point located right there. That's going to be for, not our sawmill, that's going to be our carpentry. Let's make our way along this road. And we're going to come over here to our animal dealer. So we have our animal dealer trigger there. We have our bale cell point here. And then around the way this is going to be our mill and the mill has some custom production so we have our dump point we have our pallet spawn point and then we have our interactive icon let me go ahead and buy the mill so the water mill is going to make flour from wheat barley oat and sorghum it's also going to make durum flour from durum wheat and rye flour from rye. Remember when FS22 was announced and came out? The flowing water was amazing. Ah, I just can't wait. FS25 right around the corner, but we still have beautiful maps like this coming out. It's rough. It really is rough. Uh, we'll make our way now up the hill to this forested area. And we're going to call this the farm with the sawmill. So we have a farmhouse located right here. With our sleep trigger around the back. We've got a little garage there. And then across the street... Well, we have the sawmill. So we have our wood chip point. We have our dump point. We have our wood cell trigger. We have the interactive icon. And then we have our pallet spawn point. Now let's take this road down the hill. We wind our way. Down the hillside. And down here, well, we're going to have a couple of different things going on. We've got a cell point here at the restaurant. This is going to be our dairy. We have our interactive icon there. We have our dump point. We have our pallet spawn point on the back. This is going to be our bakery, and the bakery has lots of custom production. So let's go ahead and buy the bakery. So the bakery, we have our normal bread and cake. And then we have the ability to make sweet bread from corn flour, as well as butter and sugar. We also have the ability to make apple pie, pumpkin pie, regular cornbread, pasta, and rye bread. We have our pallet spawn point, and we have our dump point around the back. And then this is where we kind of started at the carpentry. Remember, our farm is right there up on the hill. We make our way around the bend. We have our church. 
we have our gas station. We have our methane cell point. And then we have our vehicle shop. And here at the vehicle shop, we have our dealer trigger. And then we have our dealer maintenance trigger here as well. Marked out. And then we have a huge area here for our vehicles and machinery. And as far as getting our stuff out, well, we've got no issue whatsoever in getting things out of here. Fairly wide roads, so we don't have to worry too terrible much about that either. Now we continue to make our way up the road. We're going to hang a left at the intersection and head over here to our BGA. Now you will find some fields that have fencing. I did try to sell those. I was not successful in selling the fencing around these fields. The collision poles do work. So you will need to work around those if you are working close to the fields. Here we have our biogas plant. We have our methane output. We have our digestate output. We have our dump point for a slurry or interactive icon and our digester. Sadly, we do not have any silage bunkers here. There is room if you wanted to put a couple down once you buy this area. And would you believe it? There's the map boundary, right? Let's make our way over to the eastern side of the map. This is where we're going to find our forestry farm. Basically, our farmhouse in the woods. So, let's talk about how we're going to score this map. We're going to give the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. Because, well, we have six productions pre-placed. We have a water mill, we have a sawmill, a dairy, bakery, carpentry, and a biogas plant. In addition to that, we do have custom production not pre-placed. We'll go ahead and take a look at that here briefly in the build menu. We've got a road coming up, cutting our forestry in half, our forest in half. And right here, we have our farmhouse. Now, if I've already gone ahead and taken the liberty of buying this portion of the forest, that's why the sleep trigger is active. Got a little garage there, and that is pretty much it. We now own everything to the right of this road, or the left of this road, depending on which direction you're facing, and we can buy that area there as well. Now let's go ahead and jump into build mode, because we've got some things going on here with respect to this map. We do have some buildings that we can place down here, as well as some silos. We have a five point from lime, fertilizer, herbicide, and liquid fertilizer that we can place down. And then we have a few options as far as farmhouses. Under production, well, we do have some production options as well. We have the dairy. We can place down a bakery. We can place down the carpenter and then our juice factory. The juice factory is again going to make our grape juice, apple juice, pear juice, and plum juice. We do have some custom buildings for our animals that are pre placed. There was a reference to some custom fencing, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. We make our way all the way through. Man, I hope 25 has a way of sorting by mods, like disable onboard things and just show modded things. So here we have some fences and gates. There's some deco elements that are also available for placing down. Ground textures. You have some custom ground textures. Fairly standard trees and then Fairly standard plants. 
something that I think really goes into kind of making this just feel right is how the land ebbs and flows and how the roads flow as well. I, I, I was literally thinking that was a farm over there. That's outside the map boundary, people. But like here. Let's go, let's go down here, okay? As a demonstration. Right, here we have here we have the road to nowhere. It's it's going off it's going off the map boundary. Okay, but if we go this way. And well we can go right. That's gonna take us over to a nice little house and a little garage. But if we come over here, right, we come and then we go down. Right, and we drop down to this house. And then we drop down even further to to a fenced in yard. We drop down further to a river. Right? It's just it's just it's just right. Come over here. We've got a fence. We've got a little house up on the hill. Overlooking the road. Get to the house. Right, we have to we have to turn here and then we go up. Right? That's gonna take us over to some fields. This is gonna loop us around to that house. It's gonna eventually loop us around to a farm that we're gonna about to go to. Here we have a grain cell point. So let's come up here. Right, we got a road, it's cut in this hillside. And then here we go up to that farm. And this is going to be the sheep and chicken farm. We can even sell the trash can. So we have our sleep trigger. Various deco elements that will go away once we sell those. We have our chicken coop. This particular chicken coop caught me out one day. I remember now. So we have our five point for our chickens inside. We have our dump point. And then our eggs. Um, That might be a problem. That might be a problem, people. Hmm. Can we fix this? What do we have to... Yes, we can, but we have to get rid of the deco. And now we fixed it. That's sad. Hopefully this map gets updated with that moved. Because that's a shame that I've got to get rid of some of these deco things in order to clear that spawn point. We have a three bay shed there. We've seen that shed before. Then we have our sheep. We already have 150 sheep in this pasture. We have our food trough here. We have our wool spawn point. Then we've got a nice open pasture here for our sheep. And what did I say about roads? Well, you know, like this, this road, which is going to meander through this forest. And it's going to loop around after it makes a few bends and turns. You know, meander. It doesn't have anywhere to go anytime soon, so it just meanders. Right? We come here, then we double back because we're going down a slope. And then we decide, you know what? Maybe we should double back again. Why not? And we come here along. We got our cow pasture. We got some fields. Field center connect with fencing. And then we have our cow and chicken farm. So we have our farmhouse. Yeah, it's a nice basic farmhouse. Nothing super fancy going on here. I mean, we can maybe use a little touch up work on the outside. We got a chicken coop. 500 chickens again. 
Yeah, these guys love their eggs. We've got our spawn point for our food. Our dump point for our food and our eggs. Another three bay building there. And we're going to go out on a limb and call this our slurry once again. Now we have 20 cows of 150. We have our food trough. I suspect our straws back here again. And they got a nice area here for those cows to wander. And we're going to call this our milk point because I want to imagine that this is the dairy, even though there's nothing in here. That's how I want to play it. And you know what? There's no wrong way to play as long as you enjoy yourself. So that is the cow farm. Across the street from that, we've got a nice deco church and a little parsonage. No pear tree. There you go. That's that's the map. If y'all have a clue why I like this map, let me know down in the comments below. How is this map compared to the other recent maps that I've liked? You think nearly watching nearly We've done over 950 map tours. You'd think by the time I've done that many, I'd know what I like. I can't put it to words. I just have to see it and then I know it. And I like this one, just like I liked the one from last week. With respect to our scoring, let's wrap that up. We're giving the map three quarters of a point because we are missing the ability to do cotton, sugar cane, do wish we did have the ability to sell those or just strike them completely from the map. Either one would work. With respect to the farms being customizable, all the farms are totally customizable. So we're going to give the map a full point there. We're also going to give the map a full point with respect to buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique as well as round textures. And then lastly, player and interactive areas clearly marked. We're giving the map a full point there as well. We're not taking a point off because we had the wood pile over the chicken coop egg spawn point. That's, we knew where things were gonna spawn. And that's what that is all about, that it's not confusing and difficult for the player to figure out where things are gonna go. But I do wish maybe the map gets updated to move that at a minimum. That way the players that do wanna do eggs over there don't run into an issue of having to clear away some decorative bits. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this map. What do you think my map criteria is for liking a map? What is your criteria for liking a map? And what do you think of this one? Until next time, happy farming.